Hello, hello, and thanks for stopping by. This is Time Pilot for the ColecoVision, released by Konami back in 1983. Playing this game from a cartridge on a ColecoVision Phoenix system, which is an FPGA console that uses cartridges. It also uses a regular ColecoVision controller, and you can use a Super Nintendo controller as well. I mention this controller thing because the ColecoVision controller is pretty terrible. I swear it was built to just look cool and just to be different. It's not really very functional, and it's not good for lengthy gameplay. The joystick is really stiff and the fire buttons hurt my hands after a while. I know it's a 40 year old controller and maybe it just stiffened over time, but I, I can't imagine it got this tough to play with over time. It just feels horrible to hold. But it does have this number pad thing and the games do use them. I still think this controller would have been better if these buttons didn't exist and maybe they put this on the console instead, but whatever. When I play the system, I usually have to use both controllers. The ColecoVision one is important to use for the number pad, and that's how you select the in-game stuff. And a Super Nintendo controller is usually what I use for any sort of comfort. Unfortunately, this is the first game I've played on the ColecoVision that doesn't benefit from the Super Nintendo controller. It's really rough controlling with the D-pad, even rougher than the regular controller. In this one, you really have to swirl the controller around to move your ship. Time Pilot is basically an early shoot 'em up we're talking early 80s limitations, so you're not going to get what you find in modern shooters. Like massive upgrades, or lots of offensive fire, tons of enemies, that sort of thing. Here it's really kind of a bare-bones sort of an affair, but it is a clever enough concept. First, unlike most shooters, it doesn't scroll in any one specific direction. You just sort of roll around in circles, it's an open playing field really. It's kind of freeing in this regard. You pilot a spaceship, and you're traveling through time trying to rescue fellow pilots while fighting different squadrons of enemies. The enemies, of course, match the era of the level that you're in. First level starts you off in 1910, so you're going to be fighting biplanes. You'll fly around the level, you'll dodge gunfire, look for any pilots that are trying to parachute away, and do your best to shoot down all the other ships. Now, there's no real story here as to why you need to rescue these pilots, or why exactly you need to shoot down all these ships, but, well, there it is. Each level has a boss to defeat, and that boss represents the level, the era that you're in. First level has a dirigible, and if you beat it, it explodes and you move on to the 1940s. In the 40s, you fight World War II fighters and a bomber at the end. As you would imagine, it's more difficult in the first level. The bomber boss, it's neat looking, it makes sense. I have to say, one thing I do like about this game is that if you crash into a boss, which is something that I do frequently, it's possible that that does enough damage to blow the boss up and end the level, so that's something. The third level is in the 1970s, and you're going to fight helicopters that fire missiles, and there's going to be a double prop helicopter at the end as the boss. I don't exactly see how helicopters compete with a space jet but I do understand they needed some sort of a logical enemy from the 70s, and I guess a helicopter is reasonable. They sort of are slower than other enemies, I think, but they do seem to dodge better. And this particular level, I'm not a fan of the color scheme. It's a little confusing. I find myself losing track of some of the helicopters and their fire, of course. They shoot these white dots, and they get lost in the clouds. It's, it's a little bit of a bother. The final level here is supposedly set in 1985, which at that time was actually a little bit into the future. You fight jet fighters, and there is a black jet bomber as a boss at the end. I think this level really proves how crummy your spaceship is, actually, because these jet fighters are certainly faster than you are, and they're definitely smoother flying around the screen than you. I guess I would have expected that your amazing time spaceship would have had more horsepower behind it or maybe better offensive weapons. You spit out these little dots from a cannon at the front of your ship. It's really bland. I feel like they could have done more with that. This particular game offers four levels, but the arcade version of this offers five. You also get a 2001 level. I'm going to assume that this game ran into some sort of a storage limitation on the cartridge. This was something that happened frequently with this era of games. Storage on chips was actually pretty expensive to manufacture. But who knows, I'm just guessing. I feel like this one has all the basic parts of a fun game, but the handling is what holds it back. 
Yes, you get explosions when you defeat bosses, and you get decent sound effects. These definitely eclipse the Atari 2600. You also get a jingle every now and again thrown in, but all of this is kind of lost on me if my hands start hurting and I can't control the ship correctly. It's just something that doesn't handle very well. I find myself flying into enemies unnecessarily, and it's tough making the ship do exactly what I want it to do. Also, sometimes I press the fire button and I don't seem to get a steady stream of gunfire. I suppose I could clean out the controller, but I was having the same luck with the SNES controller as well, so I don't know. The colors are varied at different times, which I certainly like, but some of the color choices on the levels make it a little hard to see the gunfire that's going across the screen. Your ship has two colors and some basic detail, which is great and all. Maybe getting a little bit of that detail in the enemies would have been nice, if it was possible. It's certainly more advanced than a lot of the 2600 games that came out at that time, which was, of course, the direct competitor to the ColecoVision. I was excited to try this one out, it just doesn't lend itself to long gameplay sessions. This one's easy for me to put down. Well, that's all I have today for Time Pilot for the ColecoVision. If this is your type of video, please feel free to like and subscribe and all that good stuff, and thanks for stopping by to take a look. I hope to catch you on another video.